Amen. Our God, he is wonderful. Amen. Those that have your Bibles, if you would turn with me, uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, uh, we'll spend our time verses 1 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. Paul, the writer of, of Ephesians, and he writes beginning in verse 1, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, and the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. First, we give honor to God today, and so we want to give honor to our bishop, our pastor, Cornell Borden, in his absence today. Uh, we're praying for him mightily that the God would just touch his body, heal him, give him strength. Praying for our first lady, uh, uh, and also, as we pray for them, we pray for all of you, the saints of the Most High God, S certainly want to recognize our members, all of our officers and members, amen. And the second lady's in the house. I got to say that today. Sister Witt is here today with us. Amen. Uh, the Lord, uh, as I said uh, last evening, I received the call from the pastor that he wouldn't be in today. So uh, the Lord uh, uh, had gave me a message that at that he had given me even yesterday to see how God works. Yesterday we were here with our men's ministry, associated men's ministry, and uh, I had the privilege of sharing the word that the Lord had given me. And this word we will share with you today, amen? As we've already read the scripture. Uh, we put a title uh, on it, From Death to Life in Christ, From Death to a New Life in Christ. Uh, here the Apostle Paul is writing to the church uh, at, in Ephesus <clears throat> as he has written to other churches here in the, all of the epistles, the letters that he has written. So he's writing this letter and he, uh, let me just say this, let me just read this. And he and you, rather, he have quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. He's speaking to those Christians, but he's speaking of their prior state. Uh, he, you have quickened, meaning the Lord Jesus has made us alive, uh, who were once dead in trespasses and sin. Uh, for all born-again believers, our prior state, we were all dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, we were separated from God. Uh, we know that when sin occurred in the garden, uh, that 
communion that had existed between uh, Adam and Eve and God in the garden, that had uh, been uh, given away. Their willful sin, they had made themselves dead to Christ. They were separated. And because of them, we all that are born into this life, we're sin-stained and separated from God. We're dead to God. Uh, we are subject to the world's influence. Verse 2 says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Uh, he is reminding us that we're caught up in the influence of the world. Uh, he also lets us know that the prince of the the prince of the air the, is the prince of the power of the air is a direct reference to the devil himself. So we're subjected to the world's influence and the influence of the devil and his demons. We're pursuing also our own uh, fleshly desires, uh, if you will. Uh, verse 3, he says, among also we all had our conversations, our lifestyle, our walk uh, in those things, pursuing our own uh, fleshly desires. The lust of the flesh, he writes here, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and also of the mind. So not only we're pursuing those physical uh, fleshly desires, but also mentally, amen, we're in, a, in abundance, we're pursuing those things that do not please God, they're outside of the will of God for our lives, so he's reminding us that that's where we once were, amen, he says over in 1 Corinthians, he, he says that, uh, he makes reference that we once all were walking in ungodliness, and But some, we have been washed, amen, by the word of the Lord. So we are so grateful, so thankful that God did not just write us off, amen? A righteous and holy God, he has the authority to choose and do exactly as he pleases. But in spite of our iniquities, in spite of our sins, as it were, God loved us still, amen? So here we are in this lost state, making us aware that God has made us now alive, reminding us from whence God has brought us from. Uh, bottom line, we were dead to God in that prior state. But verse 4 makes this transition, and it ought to just cause us to rejoice in this. In spite of what we once were, in spite of the things of how far we're away from God, it says this, but God, amen. But God, who is rich in mercy, amen, rich in mercy, and for his great love wherewith he loved us, except for the love of God. Here we're sinners, uh, sinners in a fallen state, but nevertheless, God, who is rich in mercy, amen. Mercy is getting, uh, rather, is uh, withholding the punishment or judgment that we do deserve. God showed mercy on us. Amen? Why? He was motivated, it says here, for his great love wherewith he loved us. God is love. Amen? God is love. He showed his mercy and he showed his love. And it is because of God's intervention. Amen? Amen. Here we are, hell bound, lost, without any hope. God stepped in. God was not motivated by any reward that he saw. There, there's no value in us. Amen. We're unrepentant in a lost state. There was no value. But God saw fit because of his love and because of his mercy, he intervened. Amen. He did an intervention for us who were hell bound and lost. Amen. As we said, he's merciful. His mercy is abundant. His love is is abundant. God is love. He made us, uh, here, verse 5, it says, even when we were dead in sins, he quickened or made us alive with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Amen. So he did something that we did not deserve because motivated by his love, he redeemed us. Amen. And he, and in verse 6 says, and he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places 
in Christ Jesus. Amen. He has done something for us that we could never, ever do for ourselves. We could never be holy enough or righteous enough to meet God's standard. But God, through because of his love for us, he, through the power of his might, he made us alive and made us able to sit together with Christ. What does that mean? When you give your life to Christ, the word of God is you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The word of God says you shall be saved. At the moment you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you have salvation. Positionally, we're seated in heaven already right now. Get your minds around this just for a moment. When you confess Christ and give your life to him, you're positionally, you're in heaven with Christ already. And because of what he's done for us, we can take that and, and know for certain that we're positioned in Christ Jesus, seated in heavenly places even right now. There's a, we grow uh, in, in grace. We grow in the Lord as our salvation. We work out our salvation, if you will. But knowing for certainty, when we say yes to the Lord, we're seated together with Christ in, in heaven. Amen? Amen? Not because of any merit, but because what God has done for us. Amen. And it says that in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The ages to come, our eternal future. Our eternal future is settled. When you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have settled your eternal future. Your destiny is in heaven. Amen? So whether your end of the world comes early, in the middle, or later on, when your end of the world comes, you know that you'll be seated in the heavens with the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said it this way, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So we're going to uh, this eternal future. God will show his exceeding abundantly grace to us throughout eternity. Why? Because of what Christ has done for us. Amen. Because of what Christ has done for us. Uh, eight, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation, make sure you understand, it comes by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because of the grace of God. It is God that draws you. Jesus said it this way, no man can come to me lest the Father draw him. So it's because of what God has done. He has allowed Jesus to come to die on the cross, and because of what he has done, we're able to receive that gift of salvation. But it's nothing we can do. We can never be good enough. Uh, we can never be good enough to save ourselves. Amen? It is because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ brought through by the grace of God that we have this gift of salvation. As I said, not of us. Nothing we can do. We, if we had any little iota, any little thing to do with our salvation, we would be able to boast. But God took all of that away. He, he took all of that grace. Uh, it is, salvation comes by grace, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is all God. Amen. It is all Christ. Nothing, nothing have we to do with it. So we can never boast to say, I help myself. You know, even if it was 1%, we'd be able to boast that, hey, I helped save myself. But that's not the case. It's simply because what Christ has done for us. Amen. He has satisfied the demand of, of, of God. And that demand was met by Jesus by going to his death on Calvary's cross. Salvation comes by grace by the grace of God, based on our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to spend a little time on verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Let me just un unpack this. Uh, yesterday, this 
workmanship. I, I think all of us, when we hear the word workmanship, some of us are probably craftsmen and know about craftsmen, whether they're builders or whatever they, they build. Uh, you understand that. Uh, it says here, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amen. So let me just use this same analogy that I used on yesterday. Uh, you're a builder, and you decide, and I use that table there, sitting there. You decide to build uh, this table. And so you work it out in your mind's eye. You, some would call it, make, draw your plans or whatever. And you start to build that. But why are you building that? You're building it for a purpose. There's a need that you have. So the build of that table, purpose in his mind that he needed a table to meet a certain uh, purpose. The purpose for that table is to maybe set things on it or to sit there and write on it, use it as a writing table. But it has a purpose. It has a purpose. So that builder just didn't start building something. Before he started to build, he had a purpose. And I want to say, God, in his workmanship, he has a purpose for each and every one of us. Amen? I want, don't leave, just know that I don't care what, what your relationship with the Lord God is at this present moment, but I want you to know that he has a purpose. There is a purpose that he has for your life. Whether you're young, in the middle, or older, God has a purpose. Just know that. So this workmanship, it's an ordained purpose that God has for each and every one of us. You may not know what it is yet. Some of you might be walking in it now and know that you're walking in it, and some may not. But just know for certain that God has a purpose. This purpose for your life has been ordained from the foundations of the world. And why I say that? Well, I just use Jeremiah for a perfect example. Jeremiah, God said, I knew you, foreknew you, even before you were in your mother's womb. So, amen? So that tells me a couple of things. I'm not going to get into any theology here, but, but uh, we exist in the mind of God even before physically we're physically present. Amen? So here, Jeremiah, God foreknew. Amen? So he had ordained him to be a prophet of God even before he was yet in his mother's womb. And likewise, I'll say to each and every one of us, God has a foreordained purpose for our lives. Amen? Amen? That ought to encourage somebody. It also should bring some concern to some others. Amen? Am I, the question is, am I walking yet in my purpose? Do I know what my purpose is? And I would have to say, if you don't know the answers to those questions, I know one who does know them. It's the Lord Jesus. And let me tell you, if you take your requests to the Lord Jesus and make them known to him, I know that he will reveal himself to you. If you earnestly seek that answers, those answers from the Lord Jesus Christ, I know he's going to bless you uh, with the response or the answers to that. So this workmanship, so God has a foreordained purpose for our lives, and he's going to fashion you into what he wants you to be. And the expectation that as you, that is, uh, you begin to walk in that and meet that expectation that God has for each and every one of us. Good works flow out of your relationship with God. Jesus was teaching one day, and somebody in the crowd says, uh, what is the work of God? That was the question, Right? I don't know, if somebody asked that question, maybe some would start to think some ministry work. No, Jesus didn't say that. What he said was, when asked, what's the work of God? He said, the work of God is to believe on him whom God has sent. So that's the first response, relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have that relationship, or in the right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, all of the, quote, works will flow out of that relationship. You don't have to try to figure all everything out. 
Work on that right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and it will be revealed unto you what that foreordained plan of God is for your life. And then as you learn that, begin to pray that God will move you into that place, uh, move you to that place where he wants you to be. So workmanship, yes, he has a plan for each and every one of us. Regardless of what that is, God will make that known to you if it's your heart desire to know and to be in right relationship and to serve the Lord God. Amen. Amen. So God, God wants, uh, in this passage, brother, as, as Paul is writing, he wants us to know that we've come out of some places. We've done some things. But it was God in his infinite grace and mercy that has redeemed us and brought us to this place. Not only redeemed us, but by our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he has positioned us. So we are already seated in the heavens, in right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, because we have received what God has done for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what Jesus has done for us. And what he has done for us is satisfy the wrath of God, the judgment of God. He has satisfied that. And because he has satisfied that, he has taken it on himself to die for our sins. And because of what he's done, we've been set free. Amen. We can walk in liberty. We can enjoy that abundant life Christ was talking about. He said, I have come. And first of all, he said, the devil or the enemy or the thief comes to kill and destroy. I left something out, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's it. He said, but I have come that you would have life and have it more abundant. Somebody ought to shout, amen? Because let me tell you, uh, I think all of us, certainly us older adults, can look back over our life and, and think things over, I think the songwriter said, and just see where the Lord God has brought us from. Amen? We didn't, all, we didn't come here being saints. Amen? We were sinners needing to be saved by the grace of God. So we just thank God for causing us by his mighty power to pass from death unto life. Not only that, to a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. So that's our message today. But I want you to know that God loves you. God is still seeking uh, uh, and uh, for you to be all that he has called us to be. Amen? We're all saints of the Most High God. Some may be a little further along, but God has a plan for your life. He wants to use you. Whether he use you where you are or send you somewhere else, God wants to use you, and he has a plan for your life. Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand. Amen. Amen. Let me uh, extend an invitation first of all, and then we'll uh, 